You've probably heard empirical economists argue about structural versus reduced form methods. Maybe you've witnessed an economist dismissing a paper as being just reduced form or overly structural. Today, I'd like to discuss why this entire debate is built on a false premise and how getting past this confusion can make you a better economist. Let's paint a picture. Suppose you're at an academic conference and someone has just finished presenting a paper about a randomized control trial on a pedagogical method that shows improved test scores. During the Q&A session, someone in the audience says, this is nice, but what about the structural parameters? Or maybe you've seen the opposite. Someone presents a really involved and complex structural model, and then during the Q&A session, someone dismisses it by saying that there's not enough of letting the data speak, that there's too many assumptions, and how can we arrive at reasonable conclusion because of all the assumptions that have been made. Both camps think that they're doing fundamentally different research, but in truth, they're just two different points on the same spectrum. Renowned economist Phil Hale from Yale University puts it perfectly. He says all empirical work is either descriptive or structural. There's no middle ground, there's no reduced form. So what is descriptive work? Well, descriptive work primarily is looking at things that are observed in the data and looking at relationships between observables. For example, we might be interested in understanding how the wage differential between college graduates and high school graduates has trended over time, because maybe that is indicative of some kind of macroeconomic changes. On the other hand, structural work aims to quantify a data generating process and use that data generating process to support counterfactual reasoning. This encompasses most of what we would call modern econometrics, whereas descriptive analysis mainly is about applied statistics. A good example of a structural approach is an answer to the question, does health insurance make people healthy? Healthier. Now, the paper that you see on the screen is called the Oregon Health Insurance Experiment, and they answered that question using a randomized control trial, where they randomly gave people health insurance and then observed if having health insurance made them healthier. Some people would label a randomized control trial as a reduced form analysis, but it turns out that an RCT is just a structural model that has less structure than other structural models. So let's return to that RCT that I mentioned before, about pedagogical methods. The researcher divided groups into treatment and control at random, then analyzed the outcomes afterward, and then used that to quantify what the causal effect of this pedagogical method is. And the nice thing about an RCT is that it's a descriptive analysis because we can just take the simple difference in means between the treatment and the control group. However, it's actually structural estimation because the researcher has made several assumptions about how treatment status relates to unobservables, and in particular, that random assignment breaks any correlation between unobservables and treatment status. There are further assumptions about how the difference in means between the treatment and control group is the best estimator for the average treatment effect parameter of interest. And there are also assumptions about the average treatment effect in this situation being informative about relevance and policy. Once we think about this RCT example, then this spectrum becomes more clear. There aren't just reduced form and structural methods, there are methods that are less structural and methods that are more structural. Methods with less structure include RCTs, simple instrumental variables, and regression discontinuity designs, and difference in differences. More structural methods include things like general equilibrium models, demand estimation, and dynamic discrete choice models. All of these approaches involve assumptions about the data generating process. They're trying to estimate parameters that are meant to be policy relevant, and they're establishing identification that will enable counterfactual reasoning, which is what is so great about econometrics. So why does this semantic confusion matter? Why do we need to correct the record, or why do we need to establish better conversations around this topic. Well, first is if we have this artificial barrier, it's going to divide our discipline into different camps, and that's going to limit the amount of collaboration that we have on questions that are really important. If we just think of reduced form econometricians as having clever research designs and structural econometricians as having complex models that are computationally difficult, that's going to prevent fruitful collaboration that can actually solve real-world problems. Another reason why this is bad for the profession, this 
bifurcation between reduced form and structural is because it's going to prevent us from having conversations about what's the most appropriate method to use for a given research question of interest. And then finally, this bifurcation obscures trade-offs between assumptions and information content. The fact is that there are trade-offs between assumptions, where if I make more assumptions, I'm going to be able to make stronger conclusions, but fewer assumptions will leave me with weaker conclusions. And so if we think of these as not being on a continuum, that's going to obscure the fact that some assumptions are more valuable than others at helping us arrive at a credible conclusion. In this series of videos, we'll explore different approaches to identification, what makes a model have more structure, and when that type of structure is going to be valuable versus when it's not. We'll talk about external validity using some old-time physics experiments. We'll talk a little bit about trade-offs in terms of computational time and career incentives as you go more or less structural, how the best research combines methods from across this spectrum. So the next time someone talks about structural or reduced form, just remember we are all structural economists. We just disagree about how much structure we need. In the next video, we'll talk about identification, what we mean by it, and the different types of approaches to establishing identification. So I hope that you'll join me in that next video.